the April 16th, 2013 meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Batavia Public Library District. Now let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Maureen, can you call the roll, please? Sure. Babcock? Here. Von Lunen? Here. Jakubowski? Here. Sullivan? Here. Truffle? Here. Schuster? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, item five is, uh, excuse me, item four is comments from the audience. Any member of the audience wish to provide comment this evening? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> item five is the consent agenda, which consists of minutes from November 20th, minutes from January 15th, expenditures from March 2013, and an action item, uh, public restrooms, counters, and fixtures. Uh, would any trustee like to remove any of those items for a separate vote? Okay. Um, Make a motion to agenda. Okay. Second. Moved by Von Lunen, second by Schuster. Uh, roll call, please. Babcock? Aye. Von Lunen? Aye. Chekhovowski? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Truffle? Aye. Schuster? Aye. Okay, thank you. Consent agenda is approved. Uh, item six is approving the agenda. Any item tonight needing to be changed or moved? Okay. Uh, motion to approve? So moved. Okay, moved by Babcock. Second. Second by Schuster. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, item seven is financial reports. Welcome, Joy. Thank you. Um, I don't really have anything unusual to report. Um, if anybody has any questions, we did today get the notification of when we'll get our tax payments, and they'll be on time. Um, our first one is in May, and then they'll follow thereafter, and that's been the case. So that's good news that we won't have to worry about things not getting in here on time. But other than that, if anybody's got any questions, I'll answer them. Okay. Any questions for Joy? It didn't appear that there's anything out of line as far as over or so. Just no, no, we're we're looking, um, you know, pretty good shape. We only got one quarter left, you know, and we'll be um, we're getting ready to use spend our per capita money in the next couple of months. And other than that, everything's business as usual. Okay. Thank you. Okay, item eight is the president's report. Uh, a few things this evening. Uh, number one, see, uh, based on the election results, we will have a new slate of trustees as of uh, our next meeting in May. So in the interim, I'd like um, to nominate three trustees to um, offer a slate of officers to serve us uh, beginning with the, the new term in May. Um, so if, they're, if you're willing, I'd like to nominate uh, trustees Von Lunen, Jakubowski, and Schuster to that uh, committee uh, to, um, to offer a, a slate of officers for the next term. So thank you for your willingness to help out in that regard. Uh, our officers being uh, president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer uh, for the coming term. Okay, thank you. When the committee yeah. meets, I would ask they keep uh, basic notes okay. because it's, uh, uh, and in fact, we should, uh, we need to put the Old Meetings Act take okay. effect, so. We, and do, would you yeah. like to participate in that session, or is that something that you? I never have, okay. but I'd be happy to facilitate uh, okay. getting the posting done. So then we could, okay. you know, book the room if, if the committee would like and things like okay. that. Okay, so. all right. So, yes, please, uh, in compliance with the Open Meetings Act, just let George know when you're going to have your deliberation, and then we can go from there. Thank you. Okay. It's about Luna Schuster and, and Jakubowski. Okay. Uh, the next item I have for, uh, for the group is a date for uh, volunteering for the uh, boardwalk renovation related to the Batavia Parks Foundation. 
uh, at a, a, a previous board meeting, I had uh, expressed interest in having um, this organization represented as a volunteer of the week for uh, on that summer long project. And so hopefully uh, many of the trustees can, uh, can volunteer for, uh, for that work, which it basically involves a Saturday of some manual labor down by the Riverwalk uh, and helping the uh, Parks Foundation complete that renovation project. So the, uh, the outreach committee came up with three dates being <coughs> August 24th, September 7th, and September 28th. So I'd love to have trustees, and if, if staff is, is willing as well, no pressure on staff, but if the, certainly if the trustees are willing, they can get back to um, Maureen and I on which of those dates are, are doable, and then we can, uh, we can submit our, um, our name as a, as a volunteer group to the Parks Foundation. And they said it wasn't total manual labor. Like they were, there would be things to do, like if you didn't feel comfortable dragging or carrying or doing heavy lifting. They had other things to do as even baking, baked goods to bring those. Right. And it would be from like 7.45 in the morning until noon would be the hours that you would help. And they want to get organizations from all, all, all parts of the community to help. Okay. Okay, thank you, Maureen, for, for adding that. Um, okay, so let us know via, via email or, or give me a phone call, whatever, on that issue. And then uh, third item here is uh, Representative, State Representative Mike Fortner, excuse me, who represents uh, much of Batavia in, in his legislative district, uh, provided a grant uh, via the state of Illinois to this library several years back, which we used for some uh, capital improvements to the library, I guess you could call it. So we're uh, going to host him on April 22nd, uh, that's a Monday evening, right. to, uh, to come in and, uh, you know, see the improvements that we made as a result of his grant and give us a, as a body an opportunity to thank him for uh, for his help with that so we look forward to uh, to that especially in light of the um, report last month on uh, what was that the Illinois Library Association's um, recommended best practices or some oh, sort of review that, that we undertook and one of the things that we hadn't focused as much effort on as we could was our outreach to elected officials. And so hopefully we're taking one step in the right direction on that note. Um, and then one final item this evening is that uh, I just want to remind everyone that we're rec recognizing the Palmers, who were the recipients of this year's library leader honor. Uh, Sunday at 1 p.m. here at the library, we will be um, having a, a reception and a, a little ceremony for the Palmers. So hopefully, uh, and that's open to the public as well, so anyone's free to attend. Okay, item nine, uh, good news or comments from the board? Does any trustee have anything to contribute this evening? No, I do. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, We've been giving books out to students at Mooseheart who are expecting, and once they deliver, we are taking over to them um, Read for a Lifetime um, bags. Born to Read. Born to Read, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, so we received a thank you note from one of them, and they said thank you very much for the books. You and the Batavia Library sent, trust me, they will be put to use. <laughs> so, and they will, and it's nice because since I'm over there a lot, I'll be like, have you been reading? You've been using those books? And they are like, okay, yeah, I will, I will. So this is probably the best use of, a really great use of those books. So we appreciate that that's been put in use. Good. Yeah, that's a great program. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. If I may, since this is really my last full board meeting, I just simply want to say what a wonderful experience I've had serving on the board uh, for the citizens of the town and uh, for those who work here and uh, the rest of you who represent the city i couldn't have asked for better cooperation or or more fun really it's just been a wonderful experience and 
I think those who are coming on board next are going to have as good a time as I've had. I want to say thanks to everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, Jenny, for all of your hard work. Much appreciated. Okay, anyone else? <clears throat> All right, uh, item 10 is correspondence and communication from uh, this month. There were a couple items in the packet. George, anything to highlight? Well, uh, the know it owls team uh, finished in third place at the uh, Literacy uh, Volunteers Trivia Bee, so we're, we were very excited about that. And it turns out we had our picture taken and put in uh, the Trib Local, so I thought you'd be interested in that. Um, we did uh, receive the letter of award for the most recently applied for per capita grant, we don't expect to receive the check until toward the end of the calendar year, however, but uh, okay. we are now okay. assured that we will get the money. <clears throat> Do I recall a letter on this topic from our last month's packet? I said I included it in uh, this, uh, the finance committee packet. Because oh. I, I had just gotten it like yeah. that the day I was okay. thinking so I thought That's the whole board would like to see yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. And then the, uh, the third item is uh, just a flyer that uh, was released on the Wilson Streetscape plan, which uh, really triggers uh, a bit of an additional report, I guess, and uh, that is um, that Bill McGrath, the city administrator, called me uh, just before the meeting and the city has a streetscape team that meets on uh, Tuesday uh, late afternoons. It includes uh, council members and staff. And uh, sort of triggered by the board's facilities committee, some concerns have been raised about the types of trees that were planned along our property and uh, some related issues. Uh, uh, Tom and Joanne and I actually uh, participated in a meeting the day of the facilities committee meeting with, with Bill McGrath and Noel Basquin, the city engineer. And uh, Bill informed me that the streetscape team and in fact the city's arborist completely agreed with our arborist that the types of trees that were proposed were not appropriate for that spot. Uh, they would like to keep the linden trees that are there now. Uh, they, they, and they believe they may be able to keep all four of them, but they will confirm that for us. Uh, they were, are not going to put in the bur oak trees, uh, which would crowd that space. So uh, that was interesting news. Uh, uh, we had uh, pitched the idea of, you may recall that uh, the Water Street project, which may or may not have ever happened in our lifetimes, but the, one of the things that the library was obliged to do was to install a second um, stairway from Water Street to the library uh, property proper. And um, we uh, threw out the idea of would the city be willing to trade the second stairway for the library expanding the, the top of the existing stairway on the corner of Water and Wilson Streets, which there's been some discussion about on and off, uh, which we could uh, easily uh, build into our uh, masonry uh, plan. And in fact, there's an option on the table in, our, in the proposal that we'd asked for that the board hadn't yet accepted to do just that. If the city was willing to, you know, essentially give us something in return for that, and Bill said that uh, the committee this evening, or the, the team this, this afternoon, uh, completely supported that idea to give up the second staircase in return for us simply expanding the, the width of the opening at the top of the existing staircase. And ultimately, we have to do something with the railings and the, and the surface, the, uh, the facing material, which is deteriorating, so this actually could and being a very good thing for us in the long run. So I'm, I'm pleased to report those. And uh, um, the uh, Community Development Committee of the City is scheduled to meet next week to uh, take these up and make them more official. But uh, Bill was wanted to make sure that he got to me before the board meeting so I could share this information. So there's a, a, a high level of cooperation occurring right now between the library and the city. And I'm very pleased. And, uh, 
it grew out of uh, some work that the facilities committee was doing. So I want to you know compliment that committee for its work. Okay. And that may have some implications for item 15, I believe. So we'll yeah. we'll address that when we get there. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, directors and librarians reports. Uh, well, George. We will find in your packet, of course, uh, the monthly report. There are more items in it this month uh, than in recent months. And uh, let me take a quick peek here. Uh, circulation went up a whopping one tenth of a percent. Uh, that <laughs> uh, was worth highlighting, I think. Um, I've got information uh, as a reminder on the visit by Representative Fortner as item B. I've got information on the um, group of the week for the boardwalk renovation campaign as item C, including the three dates so that uh, the trustees can have that close at hand. I um, wanted to announce that uh, Batavia will host, Batavia Public Library will host its first ever Batavia Windmill Symposium in September, on Saturday, September 14th. And uh, the presenters uh, are, uh, we have local presenters, Bob and Francine Poppick. Francine is in the audience today. Uh, a newly elected trustee, but also uh, the, the, the person I think of as the keynote speaker is Dr. T. Lindsey Baker, who is perhaps the, the uh, world's most authoritative uh, living expert on American windmills, American style windmills, and we're excited to have him here to talk about uh, the history of the American windmills, and, you know, including Batavia's significance. So that'll be a very interesting day, and his lecture is, uh, uh, his talk is being uh, underwritten by the New Lyceum Lecture Series, uh, uh, which funds have been provided by the foundation to support that series the last two years, so we're excited about that. And um, I shared uh, in this packet the uh, guidelines established by the uh, Standing Committee on Finance for this year's working budget, because over the next couple months we will be working on that. And the biggest uh, item each year for us is the group medical insurance, so I was pleased to report that we did get the change uh, is up 4.21%, uh, which uh, makes the rates approximately equivalent to last year's. So that was extremely good news for us, and the breakdown is in the packet for you. So any questions on any of those disparate items? In that case, I would ask Joanne and Stacy to give their report. Hello. Hello. I'm just going to highlight a couple things from my report. Um, I mentioned in my report that we received a gift from a third grade class at H.C. Storm from their English language class. And uh, they were so excited to give a little donation that they had collected. And they wanted us particularly, they hoped that we would buy books in Spanish. And some of our, their suggestions were soccer stars and popular titles. So I just thought, I'd, we got to purchase uh, nine books, but I just thought I would send around, um, you'll recognize a couple of them, I'm sure, uh, some of the titles that were purchased. And Allison uh, was invited to go to the school the other day and show the students the books that they had uh, purchased. And they were very thrilled and they were so excited. They had brought, as I mentioned in the report, they had brought some paper bags, used, gently used paper bags that they donated back that we could put into our book sales. So, uh, there was an example of children really being enthusiastic about the library and reading and, and a group of students that maybe hadn't been to the library very much, so very interested in, in supporting the library. I mentioned in my report that spring break was very busy in youth services. We had a lot of programs every day. We had programs every day that week, very well attended. Um, I'm not sure it's because of the lousy weather that we had during spring break or uh, the upcoming holiday, but it was great. And our spring programming cycle, we do run a full uh, story times and things like that. During this month, the beginning of May, we'll calm down a little bit as we prepare for um, Summer Reading Club. And this year's theme is Have Book, Will Travel. So we'll be doing a lot of traveling and different modes of, present, uh, of uh, transportation. And our kickoff this year on June 8th, I think, um, 
we're going, we've invited a representative from the Batavia Police Department to talk a little bit about bicycle safety and from All Spoked Up to talk a little bit about bike maintenance and then we'll be doing an ice cream social and some other activities that day and that'll be kickoff day. So there'll be a lot of great things happening. Um, I hope you had an opportunity to read the very nice note that Kathleen Redmond received from a family who moved to Washington State. Uh, Kathleen certainly does a great job with that baby and toddler story time and you know they think so much of her when you know even when they move away they, they correspond with her. So that was a, a very nice uh, note to get back. And I just wanted to, uh, in true youth services librarian form, um, felt like I needed to share a comics with you tonight. Um, my dad has a calendar that every day has another Peanuts joke on it, or Peanuts from the old Charles Schultz Peanuts, the old classic um, Peanuts cat, um, comics. And this week, the comics are all about National Library Week. They're celebrating National Library Week on the Peanuts calendar. And yesterday's was kind of the kickoff, and, and I guess the weekend was, and Sally is new, Charlie Brown's younger sister is new to um, uh, the library world, and she comes to the library for the first time, and, and she checks out books, thinks this is a wonderful opportunity for her. And on her way home, she meets up with Linus, and she says, I think libraries are wonderful, she said. I really do. She said, where else can a little kid like me walk in for an absolutely nothing, be allowed to borrow a book like this one on Sam Snead? <laughs> <laughs> and Linus looks at her and says, you are right. Libraries are wonderful. And today's comic, which I had to look before um, I came today, Luce, uh, Sally again is walking and she's holding something very closely and, and she sighs and she says, Happiness is having your own library card. <laughs> so in honor of National Library Week, I thought I'd share those two <laughs> Peanuts That's comics good. with you. Thank you. Thank you. Stacy? Great. <laughs> Following Joanne always makes me think that you're going to believe it when she says that youth services has more fun than adult services. But I still maintain that adult services is where it's at. <laughs> We've wrapped up the One Book, One Batavia season. Um, that celebrated Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. We had 334 people who attended the five different programs, and it was a, a very nice season. We had a lot of enthusiasm about the book. There are many people who counted among their favorite books, and um, it was a, a very rewarding One Book, One Book TV season this year. We have one more new Lyceum lecture series coming up um, this season, which wraps up this in the spring. Monday, May 20th at 7 o'clock, Ryan Campbell from Fermilab will be here to present More Than Physics, The Ecology of Fermilab. So we're going to be learning about butterflies and all kinds of natural um, phenomenon that are phenomena that are happening at Fermilab as part of their ecological efforts. So we are looking forward to that lecture. And one other thing, our um, database use is still going strong. We're up 16% over last year. And um, again, as usual, our um, genealogy databases are receiving quite a bit of use. And some of the other ones that um, go up and down have, have been showing some spikes, which makes me think that there are some homework projects going on that are driving students toward those databases. Okay, thank you. I've got uh, just to wrap it up uh, for the trustees that are continuing and for the new trustees who I'll be in touch with. Uh, we will be scheduling a board retreat, sort of a orientation, education, planning type retreat, which we haven't done for a couple election cycles because the same trustees have been continuing. So uh, the two dates that uh, Doug and I have talked about are July 9th and July 23rd. And if one of those two days absolutely doesn't work for you, let me know. And uh, I will uh, be following up to schedule those. So. Yes, thank you. And then, uh, oh, yeah. Well, then, then next uh, Tuesday afternoon, uh, the three new trustees are coming in uh, for a first orientation meeting and a tour, and they'll get a big notebook of good stuff <laughs> and uh, a, a, a tour of the behind the scenes of the library. So uh, to start getting them ready to take their seat in May. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. Uh, item 12, committee reports. 
Uh, Randy uh, with the facilities committee is not here. Uh, would Tom or Jim like to offer anything in his place? Well, as uh, <coughs> George referred before, uh, we did talk about uh, the uh, streetscape. And uh, I had gone, as Dr. George said, I had gone to the meeting with the city along with uh, Joanne. And we uh, reviewed things, came up with some uh, questions that they had considered. And uh, as George said, they came back and uh, agreed to thanked us for our questions, brought things to their attention that they didn't realize, so um, that, that came along good. Um, I think what the other... The other thing was the uh, the counters and fixtures oh, in the public restroom. Right. That was we, on the we, it was in the uh, consent agenda where we uh, hired the uh, studio of GC is going to do the uh, study for us on the uh, replacing all the fixtures and the uh, men's and women's room upstairs and downstairs. Right. So that'll... Yes, that looks like a sorely needed project. Right. I can't speak it's, for the women's restroom. No, it, yeah. <laughs> it's going to... Uh, the plan is to hopefully have it complete in December. And, uh, okay. The library's at a low point in terms of usage. Okay. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, and then, uh, would you like to... Tell us anything about the finance committee as well. In the finance, George did an outstanding job with his uh, report, putting together all the things that we discussed at that meeting. Uh, it was a, generally it was about the upcoming budget that uh, Joy is working on, and uh, the four areas that we were looking at uh, keeping in, in tune with everything else that we're doing, and that was the uh, keeping the twelve percent. Uh, at least a minimum of 12 percent for the uh, books, media, uh, having a three percent pull for uh, wage increases. So section E. Oh. Yeah, having a two percent reserve for special funds. And then also to uh, control expenses and improve revenues without diminishing the quality of service and supply. So that was the beginning of that uh, task, and we hope to have that done uh, publicly. We're waiting for, which I see we just got, the, the new uh, health care, which came in at only a 4% increase. We were expecting much higher than that. So that'll be, uh, that'll be joy now the opportunity to complete our budget. Right. We should have something together in May. We're, we're shooting for like a first pass in May and then the, the final round. Okay. Sounds good. good. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, outreach committee, Maureen? Uh, we had Britta McKenna came and spoke to us about the uh, Riverwalk uh, renovation campaign and she explained how the boardwalk is really being distressed and needs to be replaced and so she <clears throat> gave us uh, all the information we needed about it's called purchase a plank campaign and so uh, individuals can donate to actually per, you know uh, give money to this campaign to to purchase the planks that were that are going to go in the, the new boardwalk and it's going to be it's not real wood. I can't, do you remember, George, what it's called? Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. 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 And they've done a lot of research, and this is the most uh, durable product, and the park district had said they would man maintain it. So it was very interesting to hear her tell us about that, and um, also about how we as a library community can go down there and help with that. Okay. Thank you, Maureen. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, services committee also met this month. Uh, two items um, that we focused most of our attention on were the collection of phonograph records, which is item 13, and then the library card policy, which is item 14. So I'll save my comments until we get to those items, but that was, that was the crux of our uh, services committee meeting. Um, 
amend the uh, foundation. Maureen, anything to report there? Uh, well, we're talking a lot about the, the map that we <coughs> talked about before. It's the huge fire map that, uh, who is it that has it for dinner? Uh, oh, it's, a, it's being stored at Graphic Conservation Company. Okay, and uh, we had a big discussion about where the action, where the, the best place to display the map would be, and so that I was going to bring that to the board. It's how big is it again, George? It's, it's now, uh, each map is about nine feet tall by six feet wide. And yeah. So we talked about whether this is the best place to display that if there actually is a place where people can come and look at it and it, it is also very very expensive to restore it so that would be it would have to be a project that we did with another agency also like the city or historical the schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i guess George, excuse me but how many maps are you said they're each nine by six there are two one of the east side of the river and one of the west side of the river they are the uh they're uh, insurance maps that Batavia produced by uh, the Sanborn Company which produced maps for um, uh, uh, fire insurance and for fire departments. And this one, this set was dated January of 1907. And uh, the one of the unusual aspects is that uh, these maps were typically published either as uh, loose sheets or in bound form. For some reason, uh, uh, this set of maps was converted to uh, wall maps, probably by the company that published them. They originally were on like the roll-up kind, of like you'd see in the old classrooms. Uh, they were found in the Batavia Body Company uh, before it was uh, before those buildings were demolished in the 80s, I think, uh, or late 70s. And uh, that building was originally the Newton Wagon Company. So, uh, given the date. Uh, uh, that company was in 1907 the Newton Wagon Company, so it seems that that company may have purchased those maps for its use in the town. So the foundation is really looking at, mm -hmm. you know, is this a feasible project? You know, it's a very expensive project, uh, and uh, ultimately, uh, would the library board be willing to have these on display in the library? Uh, uh, we have we have a couple of different locations where they would work, but but ultimately, I think that the board needs to. Uh, be willing, you, be willing to have is this, would this be a permanent display? Well, I would say you wouldn't want to move them very often, so I would have to say so probably a, a very long-term display. But no, just thinking of the expense involved in, in getting them prepared and everything, yeah, yeah. would it be better to just have them and but to have made copies made that you can have a smaller version of them instead of nine by six? Well, these are the original pieces, obviously. So that, that's, certain, that's certainly part of the, that needs to be part of the discussion. Um, uh, so they are, they are uh, life size. The, the actual linen or whatever they're mounted on is that tall. There probably is enough edging that I'm guessing when all is said and done, they're not really, the maps themselves aren't nine feet, but they've got to be pretty close. I would say they're probably eight feet. The, there are a couple different locations in the northeast part of the building that would accommodate that. One of the questions that came up at the foundation meeting was, is this the right location? Would City Hall be more appropriate with the Depot Museum? I know that currently the Depot Museum doesn't have that kind of space. Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't talked to Bill McGrath about whether they have that kind of space. Uh, we have good hours, so it's a, that, that ends up being a question, I think, to consider. The foundation hasn't pitched the idea yet, but our presenter wanted to make sure that everyone knew that question was on the table. Right, right. They are really so cool to, to I mean, I've only seen pictures, but I live in the old part of town and I could find you know, where my house was and they're so old and they're so authentic and, you know, they really are a piece of Batavia history, but um, is it, it's is it so possible, Would it be possible to have, like, the city and the historical society and the library do a joint venture on it rather than bearing the burden on the library the foundation. Well, I, I personally think it's going to take that kind of effort to do this. The, the foundation could never, well the foundation is, could not I think and is not willing to bear the burden of the cost but uh, 
through grants from other agencies. Uh, there's been discussion of different, including the two you mentioned. I think it really needs to be a community project, and I think the foundation board has said that too. That it, everyone that has ever seen the maps, the first if they if they live in an older part of town, the first thing they do is they go up and they find their house, which is sort of a fascinating. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're not the only one yeah. that has done that. Yeah. Uh, so there's something about maps, I guess. So the discussion is ongoing. There's certainly no decisions have been made yet. So. Okay. Anything else from the foundation? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Virginia, mm -hmm. anything from the Friends group? Well, the Friends uh, have new officers. Uh, we have a new president because Dan Russo, who has served the Friends organization for nine, ten years, I'm not sure, something like that. He's and president for six, but he was on the board longer than me. Uh -huh. He, uh, he said it was someone else's turn. <laughs> they would have been happy to keep him, I know, but uh, I think he's right. And Susan Smith is the new president. Oh, Helen, Joanne. Pardon? Joanne. Oh, I wrote it again. Wrong. Joanne Smith, I'm sorry. And Helen Conrad is treasurer, and Sue Campbell is secretary. And they're very... Uh, capable and eager to do a good job for the friends. The sales continue. Uh, I think, what is it, July there will not be? June and August. June are the two and off August months. are the two off months, no book sales. Uh, there will be one in July. So uh, that's pretty much the story from the friends. Okay, thank Except you, Virginia. For the reception, of course. Right. On the 28th, you mentioned that. On the 21st. 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 Yeah. I'm not so good today, right. am I? <laughs> this, Sunday. This, this Sunday. Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, Link. Uh, Kara, anything? Um, just a couple things. Um, there's, they're looking into a new investment strategy with some of the funds going into um, IMET, which is a Illinois Metropolitan Investment Fund. It's not aggressive or anything like that. It's just a way to perhaps make a little bit of money. Um, there is a circulation task force on how to pay for lost or damaged items through the consortium between the different libraries. It's difficult to um, deal with that right now. Um, so they're looking to alleviate that problem. Um, let's see. Um, just a couple things from the round table. West Chicago, they have an online book club which they are being, have been very successful with. And our consortium manager went to a conference and um, I guess some of the lingo out there is the acronym BLUE, which is Best Library User Experience, which is um, more access into the cloud, I guess, for our patrons to have more access to the cloud. So we're, you know, um, Link is looking forward to being a little bit more, um, have a little bit more zest when it comes to addressing um, technology and making sure the patrons are um, getting the best um, computer experience. Okay, thank you, Kara. Questions for Kara? All right, item 13 is a deed of gift related to our collection of phonograph records. Uh, so a bit of background here, probably well, I bet the date is in here. In tw uh, 2007, uh, we, this library was given a gift of thousands and thousands of both books and phonographs uh, from Barry Thorpe, a resident of Aurora. And uh, the books we uh, certainly handle as we would normally handle any book donation, either by making them part of our collection or donating them to the friends group. Uh, the collection of phonograph records was something that was a little bit more challenging for us. And after now several years, we have determined that making them either available for uh, check out as part of a regular material is not feasible. Trying to uh, sell them is not feasible. Uh, but we have found an organization which is the 
archive of contemporary music based in New York City that is willing to take these off our hands and make them uh, part of its larger collection in addition to, in exchange for essentially allowing us access to, to that collection if we if we see a need for it, but essentially uh, ridding us of the responsibility for trying to archive and and um, and yeah, catalog, if, if you will, these uh, this unwieldy collection of records. So um, this uh, the I guess um, ordinance before you is uh, is essentially allowing this library to donate this collection of records to the Archive of Contemporary Music um, with the, the archive assuming the cost of removing these from our property. Um, and I will say in Randy's absence that he expressed an interest in having some sort of deadline attached to this uh, agreement, meaning that if, let's say, six months, a year from now, the records are still sitting there and this group hasn't done what they suggested they want to do, then we could, you know, we would be free to um, pursue other options or find someone else who, who might want to take them off our hands. Uh, the language that you'll see in the agreement is a timely manner agreeable to both parties. I guess that was essentially a product of negotiation between our attorney and their attorney, so I suppose that's the best we can do. Um, I don't really have any other comments on this, but if, uh, we can open it up for questions or discussion. The only, I had a question as far as the, how it's going to be identified. Is there any way you could put in Batavia, Illinois Public oh. Library? <laughs> Probably. Because there are, there is Batavia, New York, New York, and Ohio. There are other, I, I can talk to them about that. I don't envision that would be a tremendous problem, so yeah. Okay, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Any other comments or questions on this item? Doug? Oh. Do you mind? Uh, sure. Okay, and again, you may have already done all of this, but um, were any Chicago-based companies or organizations looked at for potential George is shaking his head yes. Yes, okay. uh, we, put out, we put out a general call uh, to, to a national listserv for music libraries and librarians, and the, uh, we only got two responses. We, we actually started off with the University of Illinois, and they helped us reach out to all the other institutions in the country. And uh, one gentleman responded who was not affiliated with anybody else, and. Uh, we believe maybe we're just interested in seeing the records, and the and the second response was from uh, the archive for contemporary music. So uh, we got no interest expressed in that call in this area. Sounds like a good choice. Okay, um, I move that we uh, approve the deed of gift collection of photograph records as presented. Second. Second by Schuster. Uh, all in favor? Hi. Hi. Okay. That deed of gift is approved. The saga of the records has probably come to an end. At a mutually agreeable time. Right. right. Well, as an interesting side note, uh, in the hope that this uh, would take place this evening, uh, two representatives uh, uh, representing the archive of contemporary music and the, and the piece that was handed out is the, is the, it was the latest version of the agreement. Uh, we're here last Monday through Sunday working essentially all the, almost all the hours the library was open. Uh, Tom Sfakota, uh, who's from Hinsdale, uh, who was in New York City and is, is closely affiliated with the archive, and then another man, uh, Alan uh, Leppersman, who uh, is mainly headquarters in Los Angeles, although he spends time in Cleveland and New York as well. Now, Alan is a real expert on recorded music and the musicians. And the two of them literally 
unpacked every single box over the course of seven days in that space and did a rough sort on them. And uh, the, uh, the thing they, they found most interesting was that there, there couldn't have been more than a dozen, if that many, rock and roll records, you know, from the, from the 50s. Uh, and uh, the ones that they did find were very, were very well played. So either Barry was not interested in that particular type of music or uh, at some point had, dis had disposed of those particular kind of records before. Uh, they found, I think, one uh, record from the Sun label uh, by Johnny Cash, and they said that had been so thoroughly played that they're not sure one could actually get much music out of it. And it was not a terribly uncommon record, but uh, they'll, the record will be useful for the label because they, they actually did find uh, labels that neither one of them and nor the director of the archive in New York had ever heard of before, and so they even records that were broken that had really unusual record companies labels on them. They're, they are interested in those because as part of the history of sound recording of these companies and where they were located and things like that. So uh, they found a few local things uh, which uh, they have told me that they think uh, either should remain in Batavia or once they're digitized should come back to Batavia, the artifact. There are a couple recordings uh, uh, related to Mooseheart uh, are at the top of that list. Uh, one of them, I think, was actually, which I haven't seen because it ended up in a box before before they thought to, to, to hold that one out, uh, that was actually maybe made at Mooseheart or made for Mooseheart, uh, a 78 RPM, and another 78 uh, Columbia record where the uh, artist on it was uh, representing uh, the Moose Heart radio station WJJD, which I think was active in the 30s. So, uh, but it actually says in the label WJJD Moose Heart, Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, so a few things like that. They have three copies of a DeKalb, Illinois centennial record, a 45 RPM issued, I want to say in 56 or 59. And so uh, uh, they would be interested in one of them, but not all three of them. So we can you know, pass a copy back to DeKalb, <laughs> assuming they wouldn't already have one, but so there's you know they they have more stories than I've heard. But it's uh, Tom Vakota's father was a, is a he's still living is a musician, and uh, apparently uh, the band that he played for he, he his playing appeared on one seventy one seventy eight RPM record at some point in the forties I think, and uh, uh, by darn if uh, Tom when going through those records didn't find that record. With, with that his dad had played on. Oh, wow. So uh, just you know, crazy, crazy little stories that come out of this mm. thing. So, all right. Uh, anyway, just anecdotal. Okay. Thank you, George. All right. Uh, in item 14, another services committee item is a uh, policy on library cards, which has, until now, not existed really for uh, for this organization. This grew out of some feedback I had heard from the community. Uh, it's been quite a while now uh, about the essentially the process for renewing um, their library cards. Um, the staff, uh, uh, in addition to the policy that is here before us, is, um, uh, has certainly um, updated or, or made perhaps more customer friendly some of the um, procedures we use to to verify proof of residency and, and I certainly appreciate staff's uh, willingness to work with us on that issue uh, but the formulation of this policy came out of of a committee meeting back in November and then some discussion amongst this board uh, at our November meeting and then uh, at our at the services committee meeting in April we uh, we finalized um, uh, the recommended policy that you have before you. So, one of the things that uh, that sh I guess should be noted here is that a, we we require two pieces of identification to get a library card. One being a proof of identity, and one being a proof of residency. So, both a photo ID and then some other document, in a di uh, apart from a driver's license, that that proves that you are a, a resident of this library district. 
Um, and when people's uh, library cards do expire or are about to expire, an email is sent to, to them notifying them what, uh, what documentation they need to, uh, to bring in to, to uh, prove to us that they still do live in the district. One of the things that I've learned in this process is that there is a considerable amount of loss, theft, uh, vanishing of, of materials, and this policy really helps us um, deal with with really security of the materials that we spend, um, you know, your all of your tax dollars on. So that's important to, to remember here, and and that proof of residency helps us. Um, you know, be able to track down items that people forget to return or, or somehow go missing. I also want to bring up one issue that was raised at our November meeting here is the possibility of having photos of the patrons on each library card. That's not part of the recommendation that you have before you, but is something that staff is still working on to see if that's feasible or if that's helpful to um, to anyone as part of this process. I think to staff it could be certainly helpful in that they'll know that the right person is using uh, his or her library uh, card or as opposed to somebody else's card. So um, with that, are there any comments or questions about the policy you have before you? Yes? The only thing that you're talking about with the um, pictures is that we still have the automated um, machines, so the picture really wouldn't be any True. True. Yeah, that's a that's a good point to to raise. Um, it's only good if you're standing in front of the person, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Are Anything there else? some things that we could check out that really don't fit in the uh, self checkout? Uh, I'm just thinking of some more valuable things people might be checking out that maybe should be required. Uh, to be checked out at the desk with a photo ID or special. Well, we ID. used to not be able to check out DVDs through the self check, but with the new units we purchased a few years ago, we have unlockers, with, but the machine will not unlock the DVDs until they've been checked out. So that, that actually is a pretty high level of security. Uh, the one collection that doesn't go through the self checks is the video game collection. Uh, you actually have to go to the desk to get, we have empty boxes on display, and I dare say that has prevented a significant loss uh, in that collection. But, uh, DVDs and video games are probably the most expensive things we check out. I suppose when you go up to the, you know, you put something on hold and you go up, and that would probably be helpful there, um, yes. in that case. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Yeah. It's just the case. For example, children using their parents' card. You would know. Or vice versa. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which happens Depending a lot. Depending on who has the clients, yeah. <laughs> but, but you're right. We're not going to name any names. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how about a motion to approve this item? I, I so move. Second. Second by Von Lunen. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. That policy on library cards is approved and submitted. And item 15 is the landscape issues. Um, the um, ordinance before us essentially allows, um, once we get, I guess, a, a more concrete cost estimate, it allows the facilities committee and or George to deal with a tree relocation um, given that the uh, the work that is going to be done in May doesn't give us enough time to wait until our next uh, full board meeting to um, to deal with this issue now in light of what George heard from the uh, city manager uh, perhaps this work won't be necessary I guess that's the Way to well, describe it. Uh, the way the way Bill put it was that they believe that they would like they've decided they would like to keep all the linden trees. Uh, the city engineer uh, who's in charge of the project is actually out of the country uh, this week, 
So they're and they, so they have to actually have to review all the where the how the construction is going to take place to ensure that in fact that can happen. So there's a possibility that we may have to move some trees. Bill thinks we definitely will not have to move all the trees, and his hope is that we won't have to move any trees. But uh, I think this might be a useful device to put into place. Uh, and it would be the facilities committee would in fact have to uh, uh, act on this. I would I would certainly work with the facilities committee, but it would be the okay. facilities committee that would. And that if something else, if something comes up that needs immediate action between this meeting and the May board meeting, at least the board is in a position where we could act on that without, uh, you know, with oversight, I guess. Okay. And we don't. May on that. Uh, the reason that the the city explained to us that they wanted to put new trees there was that uh, the state of Illinois who's giving them the grant for this would guarantee those trees so if anything happened they would be replaced by the state of Illinois who would incur an expense. That's why we would have to move on but I guess they got an approval or something that and we or else we will if anything happens to those trees we are, since there are trees we would assume Responsibility for I think their idea was they felt that the trees were close enough to the um, construction or in fact straddled the property line with the city. I think that was their original motivation. And that was a recommendation from their designers. But uh, the observations that our arborists made, as I said earlier, about the fir oaks and some of the species that were intended to go in there uh, and the size and the, and the impact on that area the city arborist is totally agrees with and so they're now looking harder at you know do we actually have to remove these trees and if the answer is no we don't have to remove them let us take they'll just pull the let us pull the, the new trees out of there and if they if they if they do have to be moved or removed then what the, the city does uh, build was pretty clear that the city will not put bur oaks in that spot which have a huge canopy uh, if you look at the space between the sidewalk and the building, those would we'd be trimming those away from the building all the time for the few years. Not to mention, of course, the acorns, which the arborists pointed out. Six mature borough trees have put down a lot of acorns. I'm glad. That I'm those glad we have such a good arborist. You know, uh, he he did well by us before down here to save good trees and take out the scrappy ones, but there's so little general understanding about trees and how they grow and where they should and shouldn't be. Uh, there's an issue out at the high school right now about trees that have a lot of people very upset. So I, for one, would be very upset if you started whacking down our linden trees. So I hope we save them. Well, we want to move them. If, if they have to come down, our goal is to move them someplace else and because and, they're, they're really nice, mature trees. Well, the, the one we replaced uh, five or so years ago is not quite as mature. The one that the car knocked over we had to replace. But uh, the other ones, you know, have got uh, 10, 11 years growth on them, and they're actually quite substantial. They're not so big they can't be moved, but they're well worth moving. Yeah. There is some work he's recommended in here. We do have quite a few ash trees that there's, uh, which we can bring back to the board work on that. Uh, even if we don't move the linden trees, we've got some green ash trees and things that he said are definitely not worth treating. And that should come out before the emerald ash borer. Uh, but that's, a, that, that's not the pressing issue. The pressing issue was Wilson's tree. So. Okay. And I see there's no cost tied to this ordinance. Can you speak to... Well, we haven't what? got... Well, we're in the process of... Uh, I've talked to uh, one the tree company that we worked with a year ago, Homer Tree Service, uh, to get a cost estimate and then one of their arborists is supposed to come out, because they do this work, uh, whereas like Mike Sprovka doesn't do this work, the actual removal or, or uh, uh, such work, yeah, planning or removal. Uh, they're, they're supposed to come out uh, later this week or the first of next week, because as soon as I could get them out here, so I just don't even have costs. Which is another good reason to have oversight from the facilities committee okay. if they have to do something. All right. So if the board is, is comfortable with granting that um, responsibility to the facilities committee, we, um, with cost unknown at this time, we can 
uh, entertain this ordinance. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion? So moved. Moved by Babcock. No second. And second by Von Lunen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That item is approved as submitted. And hopefully that will uh, work out well with, uh, with our cooperation with the city. Okay, and then item 16 is future agenda items. They have a report in your packet about upcoming issues that will be before the, this board and the, and the new term. Pay special note to the meeting of the 21st because there's a, every two years we have an unusual meeting and that's the first meeting of the new board. Right. Uh, where the new trustees, all five ele newly elected trustees, will take the official oath, some for the, uh, the second or third time. Then with, then the elections will take place, and then this business is usual after that. Okay. And perhaps it's worth noting here that for those um, departing trustees, hopefully you'll be able to, to join us in May and we can properly recognize your dedication and service. Um, and then item 17 is our upcoming meetings and events. You have some things uh, as reminders there. Um, in fact, this week is National Library Week, as, as uh, Joanne brought to our attention earlier today. And then item 18 uh, is a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Babka. Second. Second by Schuster. All in favor? Aye. And we are adjourned. Thank you.